What up, everyone? I am the Comic Outlaw, coming to you from my own little slice of heaven, going from here to there, from the multiverse. I'm here with my friend Magnus, and as you can't tell by the t-shirts, we are doing Star Wars. Yes, sir. We're going to be doing this. We're going to be slicing this up in different topics. Um, we're going to be doing, like, little, well, for us, little 20-minute videos, 30-minute videos here yeah. and there. And uh, we thought it'd be appropriate to start off with The Force. We're talking about space magic? Yes, basically space magic and space samurais. Yes. Yes. Um, George Lucas kind of mixed a little bit of everything into it. Mm -hmm. Like He basically took a samurai in Merlin and added sci-fi and just kind of blended everything together. Yeah. I mean, um, later on we'll be go have doing a show about the, the different forms of a Jedi, and they have um, very samurai beginnings. Yeah. Because um believe it or not the Jedi actually started using swords and Sith. Mm -hmm. They started using swords before the lightsabers actually. Yeah, and I believe that some of the Padawans obviously they don't get lightsabers but they use like vibro swords and stuff like that. Yes. So they use similar technology that's more advanced but that was used in the past. Yeah. Well, in the Clone War cartoons, vibro blades were actually used by bounty hunters and other people too. Yeah. So it is a popular thing, those viral staffs, or whatever they're called, the little staffs with the two pink ends that Dooku, or... Um, okay, Dooku yeah. Service in, like, serve, pikes, that's what they're called. Yeah. Um, Dooku's robot warriors use. Yeah. So there are different variants to light energy. It's just the kyber crystal actually keeps, you know, the lightsaber, what makes the lightsaber the lightsaber. Yeah, so I remember when being younger, people speculated like Han Solo he's force sensitive because he was able to use Luke's uh, lightsaber to open up you know the Tauntaun and it's just like do you need force powers to actually turn a lightsaber on like is that not just just the components that make it work well let me put it this way um, a butter knife a butter knife yeah you know what I mean you can spread toast on it either which way just some people do it really well and some people suck at it yeah you know, well, you know, not to simplify the use of a lightsaber, but there are other people that weren't force sensitive that used weapons like that. Yeah, Grievous, for example, Grievous wasn't force sensitive, but he was yeah. a, a a great warrior with a you know and used multiple lightsabers. Yes, he was taught by Dooku, uh, Form Two Makashi, but um, he had more of a offset. But there are people that actually use lightsabers that didn't have force powers. Yeah. I mean, it's just basically a light sword. Yeah. But speaking of force powers, there are many, many different force powers. Um, should we go over some of the basics? I guess probably some more of like the new, more neutral ones that it seems that to be that the light and dark both use, like force push. Yes, force push. In case you guys have been living under a rock and have not seen Star Wars, force push is where you go like this. And like it says, like a, a wave out that knocks people over. And I feel sometimes it's a little abused. Like I remember like Obi-Wan, like he, he's in like a little cabin thing and he uses it to close the door. And it's just like, you're literally, you could do this with the door, like physically close it and you go like that. Well, that's just Obi-Wan style. Yeah. You know, that, that's just who Obi-Wan was. And it makes me think of D&D &D because there's an actual magic spell called Knock where it's like this... <laughs> it's like, did, did Obi-Wan just cast Knock just because he can? Well, like, in more concentrated, the, the Force push could be used in a, a wider range, like a setting off, because it's not actually a push. Yeah. They use their hand, but that's a very basic way of doing it. They can, like, do any, like, um, what was the video game with a uh, Starkiller in it? Oh, uh, Force Unleashed? Yes, where he does that big thing and it fires out like a big one. That's yeah. just an advanced for, like, version of the Force push. Yeah. Or you just think of Luke and uh, Yoda, you know, training. Mm -hmm. You know, the law of that was just like, okay, the Force sits everywhere. Just move it around, you know. Well, that's why they believe that's like the Force, death, and life are connected. Mm -hmm. um, we were discussing, like, I was talking to you about a wound in the Force. Mm -hmm. A wound in the Force is where there was a, a sudden amount of death. Like, uh, there's a big amount of death... Like, for example, um, the Death Star, or like um, some of the earlier Sith campaigns, um, Nihilus, for example, you know, there's just a sudden ending of life. Yeah. And it creates a wound because 
it upsets the balance. Yeah. So there are certain wounds in the force. They believe Nihilus was a wound in the force. He was just like a black hole of energy. Yeah. There was a rumor that said that Ray may be a black hole in the force. Interesting. It would explain... Or I mean a wound in the force, sorry, not black hole. It would explain all her... Nihilus mode. It, it seems like light energy is just diving straight into her. Like it's making her so powerful so fast. And, you know, maybe it is that way. Maybe a black hole is probably more accurate. That she's I don't just know. sucking in all this energy. If it's light energy per se. No? I think it might be, like, she's just wild and uncontrolled. Like, I don't know, like, the, the story's been so confused, and this is another thing that we talked about. I just can't stand, like, The Force Awakens was tolerable. There was a lot of things I didn't like about the movie. Mm -hmm. A lot of things I didn't like about the fucking movie. Well, it had plenty of uh, good parts. Yes, the blue lightsaber, and you know what I was talking about that. Explain where the blue lightsaber came from. <laughs> Explain it. Tell me. Damn it. I uh, mean, well, we've talked about this in the past, where that's a very Sith lightsaber thing. Like, it's very common for uh, many Jedis, especially in the past, to build their own lightsabers. While well, Sith, it's either handed down or... You know, the previous owner is no longer alive and the one who killed him gets it. Very or it shows fact. up. Um, Obi-Wan actually used Qui-Gon's lightsaber. Yeah. For a good while. So that was actually passed down. And Blue used... Uh, mannequins. Blue yeah. And somehow that lightsaber lived, even though he got cut off his hand in the original movie. And if you watch the original movie and not all the... The DVD, redo, 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 Han shot first, redo, redo, redo... You can see his hand and the lightsaber falling. Wait, didn't Greedo shoot first? We'll shoot it. <laughs> but, um... And so, the Force also seems to guide things that aren't living, such as, you know, mentioning the lightsabers, that things could just show up. Like, Well, the lightsaber, at this point, probably had a lot of essence in it. I mean, let's see. It's Luke's old lightsaber, so that means it was Anakin's old lightsaber. Yeah. Do you know how much mojo is mixed into that thing? After all these years of being used and reused? Mm. I mean, there's a lot of light and dark energy that goes along with that. Mm. That lightsaber has been used for a lot of bad things and a lot of good things, including slaughtering youngins. Not the young. Yep. Younglings? The youths. The youths. How they say my cousin Vinny, the two youths? Yeah. Yeah, well, he killed a bunch of youths that day. Yeah. And... I guess it kind of brings an interesting point with the Force that these Force-sensitive individuals, the more powerful they are, the more energy they have. But when they die, that energy, it kind of stays in that spot. You know, kind of like that, uh, once again, when Luke was training, uh, Yoda sent him into that little cave area where it was filled with dark energy. Yeah, there's several stories of the Legends version. I think it was a, a Sith that was killed there. Mm -hmm. And Yoda was using that dark essence as a cover. But sometimes the reverse happens. Depending on how the person dies, or what energy they're using, sometimes a light person that dies can send off a dark energy to the planet, corrupt the planet, because the opposite sometimes happens. Okay. It's real interesting when Jedis die, according to how powerful they are in the circumstance, even Sith. Like, some sit die, and the planet becomes a, a hellhole like Apocalypse, or yeah. new life blooms. Because the light, you know, it really depends on how they die, why they die, the circumstances about it. It's, it's really, the death of Jedi and Sith are really tricky when it comes to a planet, like how long they've been there. Mm. But it's it's really odd in how that happens. But it is, it is extremely fascinating how both light and the dark side are connected. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's kind of their origin is, was it one and the same originally? Yes. Okay, well, it was one, at one point, they practiced sort of both techniques, mm -hmm. but this was when the Force was young, and then they leaned more towards the light side, because it was more compassionate, you know, like, calmer, you know. Yeah. And um, this Jedi ended up leaving the Order because he, he believed in passion, he believed in emotion, it started a big war. The Jedi were actually the ones that started the war. Yeah. Between the Sith, they sent slaughtered them. The Sith wanted revenge. And this is before they, they they weren't even Sith yet. They were a dark Jedi. 
So the Jedi is actually responsible for creating the Sith. Yeah. In a lot of ways. I mean, that's kind of the old story is, you know, you create your own enemy. Yes, and the Jedi did a very good job of that. Uh, they do that a few times, don't they? they yes, they, they like do. They making their own enemies. Well, their self-righteousness is one of the main points that brought them down. Uh, even Palpatine said it, that the dogmatic approach, you know, would be their downfall. And it was. Yeah. At that point, they become an institution. They become like the church. Mm -hmm. Well, not like the church, but like like the Templar Knights. Yeah. I guess you could say, of the Republic. And without, and they even brought this point up in the comic books later on. And they kind of touch on this in the movies, but not as well. That without the Jedi's of the old Republic, or the you know, the, there's really no balance in the universe because people got so used to having these. Diplomats slash enforcers. Those super soldiers is what Jedi's really are. Yes, it's like having your own personal team of Avengers. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons, and also by the same token, according to the comic books, because I've been covering that uh, Dark Empire show, you guys ought to check that out, is that they got used to having a dark influence, the dark side, like a lot of like the generals and the captains. They got used to having dark Darth Vader's battle meditation. That's, since we're talking about Jedi powers, battle med meditation is another one. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you're familiar with it or not. I mean, I believe in Episode One, Phantom Menace, when there's the shield between Obi Wan and Qui Gon and uh, Darth Maul, they're both doing that, right? Well, Qui Gon more than. Yeah, but it, sort of, but uh, Qui-Gon's lack of form is what ended up killing him. Yeah. But... Qui-Gon had a quicker, f more acrobatic form, and then close space ended up killing him. But yes, they were. he was doing a form of battle meditation. Yeah, that he was kind of just, you know, on his knees, sort of being zen. Well, I guess uh, even Darth Maul's considered doing it, that, you know, he's just letting the anger and just, like, looking at Qui-Gon. Well, there's two different kinds, yeah, but... That, that's what they're saying about, like, they, they cover that in, like, other novels, too, when they bring back this other, like, dark Jedi clone guy. It's right before the Dark Emperor thing that I'm covering now. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Empire needed that dark presence. They got used to it. Yeah. Because it wasn't like Vader or Palpatine was mentally controlling them, but the dark side was such an influence in the Empire and the generals, it sort of guided them as well. Yeah. And without that presence, they lacked that that energy, you know, that ruthlessness. Yeah, so, I mean, I guess just the Sith and Jedi also just being in an area can also, just like with their death, it, their life presence can influence their surroundings. Well, that's what we're talking about, wounds in the Force. They do that naturally. Yeah. They pull people into their world naturally. They adapt to abilities naturally. That's why I think Rey... Might be a wound in the force. Yeah. I mean, do you think they'd actually go that way? No. I don't think they're that creative. I mean, with the writing they have now, I mean, like, literally, they, I don't, they they put themselves in a hole through Force Awakens and Last Jedi. I, I hate to compare it to this, but it, they literally had the Michael Myers thing going. You know, they had, like, a really good part one, part two, you know, like, movies here and there. And then they made this movie, and it's like Halloween 3, you know, like Season of the Witch, where Myers isn't into it. You know, and later on, it might be held as a good movie, but right now it just sucks because it doesn't help anything that had to do with Star Wars. Yeah. I mean, like, it brought certain storylines along, but it was just kind of a big fuck you, you know, I don't often say that, to the fans. Yeah. All the fan theorists and stuff like that, Ryan Jones was like, well, I'm just going to make a list of stuff that the fans want to see. Hmm. Okay, well, Snoke's origin. Screw that. Ray, oh, she's nobody important. Kylo Ren, we'll just keep being a bastard. We'll do some. Oh, wait, wait. We'll do some stupid cons casino thing that makes no sense with Ray and this Asian chick that we barely get to know. You know. Finn. Yeah. Oh yeah, Finn. Sorry. That's how forget. Uh, that's how forgettable these people are, to me. You know. Yeah. And um. But more with the force powers, there's one, I get it how the light does it, but like it seems that it should just be more of a dark thing is, you know, it's like 
you will give me your money. Ah, uh, the Jedi know? mind trick. Yeah, and it's just like it's um, uh, persuading those of weaker mind. But, like, does it really seem like a light thing to do? Like, that really seems a dark thing. It's just like, I am altering your mind to go my way. Well, they're doing it for the good of mankind. I mean, all they have to do is change their words to, it's just like, you are going to kill someone. It's like, you like, do not want death sticks. You want to go home and rethink your life. Yeah, you know, it's just like, it, it makes sense how it works. And I guess I can see it for both sides, but like it really seems like it's just be a dark force thing. Like the more you use it, like the more it's just like, why don't I just live life this way? You know, it's just like why would I not do it any other way? I don't know. I I, I kind of liked it, and I I can see like why people like Obi Wan would be able to use it mm -hmm. more crafty, more you know. So I see why it could be both powers, but I think the dark side would be more prolific in it. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's see what other stuff. Uh, levitate, of course, force speed, uh, body enhancements, yeah. basically. Well, I mean, uh, yeah, the force speed and all of that is really showcased in the prequels, where the Jedi, they've been training for centuries at that point, unhindered by the darkness. And so they're doing all these flips. They could, like, run, like, really fast and... Well, that's the problem, and again, I hate to harp on the new Star Wars movies, but that's the problem that I have with the new ones. Luke had progress. Mm -hmm. Luke earned it, and Luke became, in Legends, yes, he became overpowered. Yes, he was able to control Black Hole. Yes, he was able, but all that was earned. It was a progression yeah. as he went on, you know? Like, he, like, like, Ray just, all of a sudden, part one, was able just to fight. Kylo Ren like nothing. Luke did not grab the lightsaber and kick Vader's ass in New Hope. No. Uh, let's see what other Force powers. I do like in Legends, and I covered this in the comic book that I thought was cool, that Luke had become so prolific with the light. Remember we talked about this? Mm -hmm. That he was able to extend the lightsaber field around his body. Yeah. And stop like a walker's energy attack. And not only that, direct it and then bring it down. And it was impressive because the lightsaber kept its form, right? It's yes. not like... Yeah. Like he made it like push it around and make it go no. around him. No, he, he extended him. Yeah. yeah. And that feels like a very um, Jedi thing to do because they have different ideologies on what the lightsaber means to a Jedi and what the lightsaber means to the Sith. Yes. It really depends though. It goes back and forth with Sith and Jedi. Mm -hmm. There are certain Sith that love the lightsaber. Yeah. Take Bane, for example. Uh, Darth Bane was a very prolific fighter. Mm -hmm. And then we have people like Plagueis or um, Darth Xana. Even his, um, the one that ended up beating him in the Rule of Two, she relied more on sorcery. Yeah. Um, and then you have other Jedi like that too. You know, they, they rely more on their force powers, moreover than their ability with lightsaber. Yeah, and well, there's a form that's both a mixture of... Uh, uh, sword play and force power is that five i think it's six six because five is the straight out aggressive one okay so then five six. is the answer to um form two okay so then six is that you uh effectively in equal measures use it, a lightsaber and force power form six makes you sort of a jack of all trades where you balance out the force and this and that you know yeah yeah but um I believe for at least uh, the Jedi, the difference between the Jedi and the lightsaber, there is no difference. They're the one and the same. You know, it's just like the lightsaber is the extension of their body. You know, yes, it's as if they had a longer arm. While for the Sith, it's more a lot of them, um, the lightsaber is a tool, you know. Well, yes, yeah, because the Sith believe that you should have more power, more understanding beyond the lightsaber. Yeah. Yes, the lightsaber is dangerous. Yes, it's an extension of oneself, but it's not all that oneself is. Yeah. There's more to power than just one weapon and one tool. All right. That's why uh, force lightning, since we're talking about Sith. All right, so bleeding more out from the neutral and going out? To yes, darkness. energy. Um, there was a Jedi, a uh, Master Plo, the, the Jedi with a respirator. He ends up getting taken out in um, Revenge of the Sith by his old man when he's flying. 
He did a weaker version of Force Lightning. Yeah? Yeah, but it wasn't as strong. But yes, yeah, certain Jedi could actually concentrate it. Okay. Uh, would it not cause him by using it to make him lean towards the darkness? No, it was a, a way of forming and drying off life. Okay. It was it was odd the way they explained it, and I always thought it was a cheat personally. Yeah. But it's there, it's canon, so talk about it on the show. Yeah. Uh, let's see. A super leaping levitate. Vader was actually good at levitating. Yeah, I believe there's one part. I think when he was fighting Luke, he kind of like mm -hmm. got knocked off from these stairs, but he kind of does this clumsy back, back flip because of it, but he also levitates, so it's fine. And then um, there's a way of levitating using lightsaber fighting. Uh, I can't remember the name of the Jedi. She became a Sith. She fell. She was uh, she used three purple lightsabers. Wow. And plus holding her red lightsaber. Again with a kid. I can't remember. And she would use them fighting. Mm -hmm. She would actually use her power to literally have these lightsabers fight at the same time when she was fighting with her primary one. Yeah. And that was her main speciality. So there are also many different variations on force powers and how to use them. Yeah. Uh, Mace Windu, for example, had like a hard body kind of style. Like where he would use the force where his punches would be harder. Where he'd be able to like dent the android armor. Yeah. Without a lightsaber. It was like a, uh, like the Chinese hard style of fighting. Yeah. You know. Or uh, the wrestling. I should, I should say like wrestling is their, their hard style. A lot of hard kicks. A lot of... And the force would make dents in it for him. So, yeah. yeah. There are many different variations of powers. Um, well, since we're talking about the new stuff, Kylo Ren's stopping a laser beam. Yeah, because I believe when Darth Vader did it, I think that's attributed to his actual metal hand is capable of blocking it. I think it, is... it was actually redirecting the energy. Okay. It was a it was a form of force barrier. That's what he was doing. Okay. Because he couldn't do the force lightning, but he focused more on force barrier. That's why, like, um, ah, the the Star Killer game again. Uh, force Unleashed. That's why that dude was able to do these concentrated like ah blasts and like it would wipe out all the stormtroopers except for Vader. You know, he'd just be like kind of duck his head a little bit and walk on through it. Yeah. Because he put more the energy that he couldn't have in force lightning he actually put into force barrier. Yeah. And that's what made him such an unstoppable tank when it came to that. And then he had to get used to uh, Sidious's lightning blast as punishment over the years too. Yeah. And he altered his uh his mechanical body parts because I guess force lightning it's not just space magic but it's also electrical in yeah. actuality and it would damage the systems and I believe he converted a lot of it to be sort of um, I guess electrical MP proof yeah Vader was actually really good at that he, he found a way to actually filter it through his body too I think had Anakin lived another five years I think he would have been more formidable mm -hmm. But as it stood, he got really crappy stuff from the... The Emperor actually really did that on purpose. I think he pretty much gave up on Vader at that point. I was just using him as a thug. Yeah. You know. Uh, let's see what other... Well, that's why he wanted kind of Luke. Because it's just like, oh, you know, my golden child, you know, Anakin. You know, mm -hmm. He got messed up by Obi-Wan, and now I'm kind of stuck with him. Because Dooku's dead. Force, um... Oh, there's another one. Uh, we were talking about Darth Nihilus. Mm -hmm. Darth Nihilus was able to absorb whole energy of the planet and keep it into himself. That's another odd ability of the dark side. Uh, let's see. Dark side alchemy is very interesting. What's that about? Uh, Darth uh, Zana actually used it. Uh, read the Darth Bane books, everyone out there. Very good. Worth the time reading. Um, Darth Zana... Um, Dark side sorcery, you're able to like project illusions, madness. Um, one of her favorite moves, like these weird electric snakes, mm -hmm. they would come up and they would melt anything they touched. Yeah, very odd stuff, you know. Like it gave her like a plethora of powers. She was, like I said, she was actually a form three user, mm -hmm. the same form as Obi Wan Kenobi, only a dark side version of it. Okay. So that's an interesting thing about these forms and these powers, because we were talking about the Jedi mind trick. Usually, form three is a, a celebrated Jedi technique. Yeah. But here, the second Sith Lord of all time 
or the second Sith Lord to inherit after Bane, was a practitioner of that. So it's very interesting how they would switch and how you can adapt the Force or a fighting style to the person yeah. itself. And that's what I love about the Force. Either light or good, fighting styles, powers, everything's fluid into your speciality. Uh, mm -hmm. Sidious's precognition, for example, that's another power that exists between the light and the dark. Yoda had part of it, too, where you're able to see into the future and predict possibilities. Yeah. And um, the best metaphor I've heard of this is from a book called Doom. Mm -hmm. When um, the main character, Paul Atreides, is trying to describe to uh, one of his captains how it is that pres prescience works. Mm -hmm. He says, when you're looking into the future, it's as wide as a valley. But well, once you make those choices, it becomes as narrow as a door. Okay. And I always thought that was the best metaphor for precognition. Or like you only know so much, and you get locked into it. Yeah. You know. Because to know the future is to be trapped by the future. Yeah. And so, we've mentioned something that the darkness can do. Is there something the light can do that the dark can't? Well, those powers are often shared. Um. Well, I guess the light have an affinity for coming back to life more than anyone else. Yeah, that they have uh, force ghosts. Yes. Uh, that the darkness can do, but you don't see it as much. Exar Kun did it in the Jedi Temple in Yavin, but his, his essence was actually stuck there in the temple. Yeah, because I believe the Sith are kind of needing aid to be in ghost form. I believe that they can use technology to help. When they get stuck into a certain item or enchantment. Yeah. But from what I read, the Jedi Force goes only have so many times before they dissipate. Okay. But which is weird because in the new movie, and I keep harping on this, Yoda was able to summon lightning. Oh, yeah, sorry, spoilers. Spoilers for any prick that hasn't seen the movie yet. But, I mean, maybe it was, like, not Force lightning. Maybe he altered the weather and it was literal elemental lightning. I guess... I don't know. Have, have we seen Jedi that could do that? Like, make it rain? No. And not in a cantina? No. I uh, like, I, but with ancient Jedi, dude, ancient Sith, it really depends. Like, certain people had manipulation of the Force when it came to plans. Certain people had manipulation. It, it really depend, like, depended on who the Jedi was, mm -hmm. the timeline, uh, how powerful they were. Um, certain them, certain Jedi's as well as Sith had certain specialities. Yeah. Um, there were certain people that could dip between both. Take Windu for example. I like, was telling you about this. I think Anakin, because like you brought it up, that Mace Windu did not like Anakin. No. He didn't trust Anakin. I think the wise decision instead of teaching Anakin four and five, if I was sitting in the council and put half a brain into it, was to teach him form seven with Windu. Yeah. Still have. Don't change Obi Wan Kenobi. Have Obi Wan Kenobi as his main master, but have Windu teach him Form Seven. Yeah, I think that would have brought his emotions more under control. Yeah, it would have tempered him a little bit. Yeah, but the Council kind of really, really messed up with Anakin. They really washed their hands of him in a lot of situations, yeah. which I think their hubris was part of their downfall in that respect. And it seemed that they were used to kidnapping children at a young age Ugh. because Anakin had a lot of baggage when he went with the Jedi. You know, being a slave, you know, mother being a slave. Yeah, know. they didn't lift a finger to liberate her. Yeah, and that, you know, they didn't really seem to know or care how to handle with what is effectively his PTSD that lasted through his life. I mean, people mock that, you know, I don't like sand, you know, it's coarse. You know, it's just like, that could be him trying to let out his emotions, but he doesn't know how to because he was told to suppress it. Well, in the Dark Force Rising books, like when, um, it, it talks about Vader, mm -hmm. like, um, it's, I think like six months after, um, Revenge of the Sith. Mm -hmm. And like, you get an idea that Vader will never touch down on Tatooine again because of all the memories. Yeah. Because he's trying to bury Anakin. So it's one of the reasons he would never touch down on it again. Yeah. Because the pain would be too overwhelming. Yeah. And that sort of fits his character too. But uh, 
They like uh, the council really, really dropped the ball on Anakin in so many different ways. Yeah. <clears throat> well, the council dropped the ball in a lot of different situations. But I, I feel <coughs> that would be a sort of talking about specifically the Jedi and Sith more. But um, interesting aspect that I find about the Force is that it's just not people or what could be considered sub races that have Force powers, but even just animals that have it. You were telling me about, me about a lizard Yeah, kind of these creatures. Like lizard creatures they were using in the book. I can't remember the name, but they um, created like a force barrier or energy mm -hmm. where force you would even do the push and they, it would just naturally block it. Yeah. And that there's sort of like these jaguar creatures. I want to say like if you've seen the movie uh, Avatar, that they yeah. have like these black jaguar creatures. They kind of look like those. And they use uh, dark force powers to help them locate their prey and that they hunt in a pack. Like the wolves in Star Wars Rebels or the creatures in um, Last Jedi. Yeah. There's always been, there's always force sensitive creatures. Yeah. And a force sensitive plants, planets, light and dark is just part of the balance mm. between the universe. And so a weird thing about the force is it's hereditary if that makes any sense like that's in a one way. Of, that's one of the theories of that jedi shouldn't marry not just because you know love leads to hate and all that stuff but also it could create dynasties that if all these powerful force users make babies those are powerful force user babies right there yeah but wouldn't it be better to build a dynasty than to steal children yeah but then you can also have the moral this question thing. of eugenics of you know it's like oh what's going to stop you from trying to breed effectively just trying to breed star killers you know well they tried cloning him mm. that didn't work out too well i mean they couldn't ask for chance in the cup <laughs> and at that point he pretty much got wiped out by palpatine if i remember the game correctly yeah uh i don't know that'd be a very awkward conversation between him and vader Star killer. The Emperor demands that you fill the cup. With what? You must put your force energy in. Or release your lightsaber upon the world. And spill your metachlorians into the cup. So we finally mentioned it. Metachlorians. Yeah. I, I nice always... Interpret it as these microbials that lived inside cells and that they're attracted to the force and that the more force potential that people had the more that the, this these metachlorines congregate which i believe the canon is picks actually a worse option than that i see them like bacteria yeah because once the host dies the metachlorines go away yeah so, I don't know, dude. Like, the whole Millichlorian thing was just so weird well, I mean, when they introduced it. They've been working on it, but it's kind of one of those things they mention, but they really don't hmm. anymore. But, I mean, and it could potentially raise the question is, is the Force sentient? Is it potentially living being? Like, the Millichlorians could be a physical representation of the Force. Could be. I mean... And it's kind of the thing where, the once again, the Jedi were left unabated by the Dark Force, and they were kind of left with their own devices. You know, they had their own ships, the Arc Fighters. Yeah. Where, you know, didn't have any sensors or anything like that, that the Jedi just used their Force powers to fly around. I... And, you know, that they were studying metachlorines, and they were using it to help them steal children. Yeah, they were doing all that. Yeah. I, I think the... The biggest Jedi weakness was pride. Yeah. And it's one of the seven deadly sins, I mean. And then the, pretty much the Jedi had gotten spoiled by the time they were, like, public, the Phantom Menace had come. Yeah. You know, they were rich. You know, like, even, like, if you look up books and stuff, they were rich, rich. They were, like, the lords of, man, like, they didn't have material possessions. Yeah. They had the finest quarters, the finest lightsabers, but, you know, everything was taken care of for them. Yeah. They never really had a scrap for anything. I mean, their robes weren't very tattered. Uh, tattered. No. Tattered. There we go. 
But and um, but was mentioning that uh, that there's species that are force sensitive. On the opposite spectrum, it, even though there's been stories of it, it seems that droids and machines have issues with it. Yeah, like Darth mechanical. Vader. Darth Vader can't use force lightning because it specifically shoots out of the hands, and he has robot hands. Yeah, well, they actually touched on that. That's what I was saying before. That's why he was so good with the force barrier because he couldn't do lightning. Yeah. But, like, I believe, was it an R2 unit that was supposedly Force-sensitive? It was one of those bounty hunters. It was one back here in this picture. Okay. Uh, well, supposedly, before he got blown up, he was starting to understand what it was to be Force-sensitive. But we'll never really know. So then it might be a degree of sentience because... It might be. Darth Vader's hands, robot hands, can't be sentient, so they have no mind of their own, but a droid that, you know... Well, there's been a, quite a few Sith that have had body modifications that are able to do Force Lightning. Okay. Um, there was Sith that were barely held together by the Force that were still able to do certain things. I think Vader just did not have access to the holocrons that Sidious had because Sidious was a nefarious hoarder of information. Yeah. For Sidious, knowledge was power. He learned that from playing against the wise. And he, I think after he, Anakin became Vader over the years, he just didn't see him as worthy anymore. Yeah. You know. Let's so, see. Is there anything else you want to touch on on the Force? Mm. You want, can the Force heal? I believe that's yes. something the light can do. Yes, that's actually something that's almost exclusively to the light. Yeah. Healing. Healing to a certain degree. There are healers. Yeah. Massive well, and little all the way around. think sort of how the light can cheat lightning. Uh, I think the dark can cheat healing, but it requires to take it from something else. Yes. Like I said, like the dark needs, like it's like magic. They use more of the black style. Mm-hmm. They'd be like black and green or black, you know, anything with yeah. black and where they, they use empathy, um, entropy, there we go, okay. where they, they steal life from something, they're able to borrow life. But like Nihilus, yeah. where he, I keep harping back, well, he's one of the most powerful ones who's able to absorb life. There was a thing with Darth Bane, and it was a version of the force field, and it was supposed to, like, he was standing around him, and he spread it out, and it would vaporize people, like Starkiller did. Mm-hmm. But it, the essence, every person it killed it would make the force field stronger and expand so yes they are they do have ways of drawing off the life as do the Jedi yeah the the Jedi just do it better than the Sith yeah in some respects Uh, if we're going to talk about that uh, Darth Plagueis Mm -hmm. being able to reawake the Minichlorians and another um, dark Jedi that was sent after him that's what Sidious was talking about, that he figured out how to do that to a point. Yeah. Sidious forms of immortality, since we're talking about powers. He's able to transfer his dark essence from one body or one clone or something to another. Yeah. Darth Bane actually tried this too. There was other Sith that had done this over the years. They were able to transfer their essence from one weak-minded host or something like that. that yeah. Was. So there are so many different powers. We can actually sit here and talk for another two, three hours. Um, from what I could think of, no, because we're going to be covering the forms in another one. I don't really want to get into that. That's why I've been kind of wishy-washy on that. Yeah. Because with the forms, kind of the different colors of the lightsaber, and I feel like it's a different show. But um, as far as powers, I feel like we've covered a fair amount. Um, yeah. You know, we talked a decent amount of just a force in general, its pass, you know. And if anyone watching well. out there has any suggestions or any other powers we may have missed, feel free to drop us a line. Let us know. We'll um, bring it up on the next show. We'll gladly talk about it. We're always up for some communication, up for some suggestions. Um, like and subscribe us, please. And uh, this is what we do. We talk about multiversal things. I come from one multiverse. He comes from another one. We shift here and there. We love our Star Wars movies there. Mr. Magnus, anything you want to add? Um, may the Force be with you. Yes, may the Force be with you. And as always, Comic Outlaw. Mr. Magnus, and we'll catch you on the flip side. Yeah, yeah. Later. Yep.